So everyone, welcome again to another Follow-Up Boss episode. And today I've got a friend of mine who, this is our second time on here, man. So yeah. it, it's uh, the first time was great. And I have a feeling this time is going to be even better because you did even better. So tell yeah, us what's yeah. happened over this last year and, and this whole run up on business, man. Tell me that and then we'll get into the question. Yeah, definitely. Uh, God, I remember two years ago, right when COVID hit, um, I think I hit like 22 or 24 million in sales. And then obviously COVID hit and everyone thought like, oh, the doom and gloom, like there's no way we're going to sell real estate anymore. And then obviously the opposite happened where prices just went crazy and through the roof. Uh, so the following year, I think I did like 44 million. I was like, wow, that was just an insane year. Like there's no way I could top that. And then literally last year, I again went to like 64 million. I think I ended up reaching. So it's not one of those things where, you know, you went from 22 to 44, then 64 within a two-year span. It, it's just, it's crazy. My team grew. Um, I ended up hiring two more assistants. I had some, I uh, hired some buyer's agents to kind of do some showings, things like that. But it's been insane, incredible, blessed to say the least. So it's been awesome. All right. And with this growth, what do you attribute the growth to so that people listening could be like, God. Um, so I do a lot of different trainings with different agents and um, I'm a speaker for some Compass events as well. Um, the end of the day, the more money I end up spending on marketing, the more money I end up getting back. Um, and there's not really any secret formula to it. It really just comes down to the more money you spend, the more money you're going to make. The more you put your face out there, your name out there, your brand, because essentially the way I look at it is I'm not selling a house. I'm not selling the company. At the end of the day, I'm selling myself. I'm the product. So if I could sell myself to that client, I win all day, every day. So I'm really betting on myself to make that money back, which at the end of the day, I'm going to bet right every time. I like that, man. I like that a lot. All right. So where would, where do you think that the real estate market is heading in your area? Because I, we hear a lot of different things. Like we even hear that the market was crashing at some point. Obviously, yeah, it's not. A lot of the the economists are now back to normal and say, "Oh, you know what? We were wrong. The the market isn't going to crash. It's just it's just feel yeah. like correct." Which uh, great, but your market, where is it heading? So our market's a little different. Our market's obviously heavily based on our weather, our beaches, kind of like the laid back lifestyle. You know, it's not crazy like Miami and Fort Lauderdale. It's more so where the retirees come and get their second and third home. So a lot of our markets are based on either families coming down to raise kids or second and third homes for other people around the world. Um, we did have that huge hurricane that hit obviously Florida around the October timeframe um, and that impacted prices for like a month. So people were kind of getting homes 60 to 70 cents on the dollar because a lot of these homes were flooded on Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel, which it was absolutely, the damage was astronomical. It was, it was insane. Um, I had some clients where we would walk up to their properties and the house isn't there, but the house is about 500 yards into the water and you can see like the tip of the house sticking out of the ocean. Okay. So kind of like the craziest things, you know, I, I've seen one of my clients had all her walls cave in on the second floor and literally her couch was the only thing just standing still on the second floor. Right. So insane. Um, but now what people are realizing is five years, Fort Myers Beach and Sanibel will probably be one of the most expensive islands in the entire country because everything's going to be brand new. So there's nothing that's going to be there in the 50s, 60s anymore. Everything's going to be 2024 build or, or newer. I love that, man. So a lot of people are kind of holding on and, you know, they're like, well, we don't owe anything on these homes. We're going to hold on for four or five years. Maybe we build or maybe we just sell the lot. And that's how that goes. Um, but realistically, haven't seen really a slowdown. More so kind of turning into, so our season is between January to April. That's when we get peak season and people start coming in and buying a lot of homes. What I've, and I'm mainly a listing agent, so what I've kind of been seeing on a lot of my listings is a very stagnant showing opportunity. So we get tons of showings, but not really much feedback, not really many offers. And it's kind of across the entire um, area. Like I'm, I'm in this big real estate group chat and we all kind of talk about how we have all these listings, but no movement. And you'll do price decreases of 50 grand, 100 grand. And it's like, can we just get one showing request? You know, you'll do different things with marketing and open houses different events of these houses and still nothing. And it's kind of like, what's going on here? Are people kind of scared because the interest rates are here? Are they kind of scared of what the media is saying, saying how the market's going to tank and we're going to go in a huge recession? That's kind of what funk we're in right now. 
Mm, dude, I like it. You know, I'm going to share a um, I'm going to share an article with you when I find it in between yeah. explaining something to us that'll that'll give people a clear indication of where we're going. Uh, Goldman Sachs just came up with it uh, yesterday on Fortune magazine. So I'll drop it in. Question though about listings. Yes. Where where are you getting your listings from? Just over the last three months, where are they coming from? What source? Yeah. So my kind of whole. And this is obviously advice that I'm kind of giving out to everyone. When I put any home under contract, whether I'm the buyer's agent or the listing agent on that contract, the moment I put it under contract, I send out mailers, like probably 500 to 2000 mailers for just pending, right? So if I'm the buyer's agent, I put it under contract, I send tons of mailers to that neighborhood where it says just pending. The moment we close, I send again, the same amount of postcards out or mailers to the same neighborhood where it says just closed. And then for a third time touch, I'll make up a mailer with my statistics, uh, what I did last year, what I did uh, the year previously to that, and I'll send out another mailer trying to get them to list with me. That has been my most effective strategy. I like that, man. Flooding the mailboxes completely. Do you ever flood the mailboxes of areas where you're not closing transactions in? So whenever I've done that, I realize I never got calls back. Uh, Ah, interesting. I kind of did like an A and B testing on that. If people aren't familiar with what you've sold in that community, they won't call you. So if they see like, oh, you sold Susie's house down the street, they're gonna be like, oh wow, like I'm gonna go ask see Susie how Adnan was, how he was as an agent. But if you're kind of just unknowingly sending postcards and mailers to neighborhoods you don't even know anything about or just never sold anything in, more than likely they're not gonna call you. All right. So tell me, g- give me the process because I know everyone's asking, okay, let's get some details. You yep. get a listing. Yep. How many do you send out? How big is your farm? And then give me the process as to when you're sending these out. Yeah. So God. So per month, I probably send anywhere from ten thousand to twenty thousand mailers. Um, I mean, I, I flood them. I mean, I've had people comment. They're like, "Are you going to stop anytime soon?" Or <laughs> um, so that's kind of the funny part about that. So the process is: so if I list a property, let's say I list one in the community. Um, in Fort Myers. So the moment I list it, I'll do a just listed and I'll create a postcard based on the property in the front and the back of the property will show my statistics, kind of what I've sold, what I've done, my volume, things like that. The moment I get it pending, I'll do another postcard. Same thing, property in the front, just pending. Uh, I'll do the same statistics on the back with a different message. The moment I get it sold, again, just repetitive again, getting my name out there repeatedly, I'll do it again. And then the fourth time I'll do like a, kind of like a market report and then do a bigger mailer, kind of a, I'd say an eight by 10 uh, postcard mailer. And then it'll have all my previous solds in that community and then more statistics about the market. So now the person's seen me four times at this point, they've seen what I've sold in here. They've seen I've sold four or five homes in this community. So at the end of the day, they're gonna think I'm the expert, expert in the community. So they're gonna come to me for anything real estate related. I like that, dude, that makes total sense. And that's how you break in. Oh. Yeah. Do you continue to mail out to the areas after you've closed, like in a little farm area? Or yeah. You uh, off? No, I'll continue. Um, I'll send out random uh, market reports um, if I see something interesting. Um, if I do enough, so this is kind of where I connect different communities together. If I see that a community is alike with another community, um, what I'll do is I'll cross reference. So if I sell a big sale in a community and a community A, and community A and community B are very similar in location, I'll send that postcard out to the other community. So that way sellers can see that I'm also getting buyers in their competitive community and I'm cross-referencing that at the same time. Got it. And who are you using for mailers? Is this in-house or where are you? It's all through, yeah, in-house with Compass. I just use that. Perfect. I like that. Trent, any questions on that process? I mean, I like how it, I like how it works. So you've obviously found a system that, you know, you can repeat and scale as well. Um, I liked how you're cross-referencing your communities in addition. Um, so do you um, get new communities, like with new homes in some different areas, and then you have to start that process over again? Um, yep, exactly. Um, so again, everybody kind of hates it, but, you know, I use third parties such as like realtor.com truly uh, things like that to kind of get into those communities by spending market, marketing dollars in those. And then obviously as you start getting buyers in those areas and you start selling homes in those communities, that's kind of how you tap in. Um, and I kind of realized the more I kind of send out, the more money I spend on marketing, 
it just turns like in this a, a circle, a spinning wheel, where it just repeats the same thing over and over again. Nice. And do you get feedback um, from different people in the community? Like, hey, I saw your uh, postcard here. You know, I spoke to Susie down the road. Are you hearing from people in that regards? Yeah. So one community that I sell in, I pretty much took in over the whole community. It's about 96 homes in there. Um, that community is very close and tight-knitted. So all the neighbors know each other and they'll be like, hey, I spoke to so-and-so. I spoke to this person. You listed their home. They signed the listing agreement right away without me even having to like pitch them. Uh, one of the other communities that's much bigger, it's about like 590 homes um, and they're building another phase two. So it'll be about 1,500 homes total. Um, that community obviously is a lot bigger. People don't know know each other really. When I start sending all these postcards on, they see my name 15 times with different sales. Honestly, I walk in there and they're just like, okay, I'm ready to list. Because they've seen my name so many times in the community. They yeah. just don't even really interview anymore. That makes a lot of sense too, man. So that that's key because a lot of people are like, well, I have to work on my listing presentation. I have to work on this whole pitch. And I'm like, well, if you build up enough value when you show wow. up, if you don't, if you don't over talk yourself, you over talk your client to death, you'll get the listing because they already, they're already sold on you. Yes. And I do bring, I bring a listing presentation that it's kind of, so I bring it both when I do buyer showings and listings, but I bring this whole uh, booklet that I bring with me. Um, it's a custom folder with my logo on the front. And then inside of the folder is probably a 15 or 16 page packet um, that's laminated and everything and has all my stats through everything that I've ever sold. And instead of handing a business card, I pretty much hand out this packet to buyers and sellers. Um, so when people read it, they're like, well, usually agents give me a business card, not a whole thing that you probably spent five or $10 on. So it kind of sticks with them. And then at that point, they kind of call me after that. Yeah. Good point, man. Good point. A question from Ariella. Hey, Ariella. This is, are you, you sending five by eight, four by six postcards or, or what are you sending specifically? Uh, five by eights. And then there's one more bigger one that, uh, the compass platform has, uh, can't, I think it's maybe like an eight by 10. Um, so like a full on, like a yeah. full on page. Yeah. Yeah. They do a couple of, I, the five by eight is my most common one. And then sometimes I'll do the bigger one when I have multiple listings or multiple show or multiple listings or solds in a community. So then I'll kind of cram it on the bigger one. I like that. And do you track the return on investment for every type of postcard? Like, like just sold pending or active? Kind of. Just yeah. I mean, a lot of people view their returns on like a monthly basis and then they kind of freak out where they're like, oh, I just spent $5,000 this month, but I've seen no return, right? A lot of times those postcards, they won't reach out to you that month. They'll kind of reach out to you within the next month or the month after that. So I kind of yeah. view that return. The last two years I've done it, I viewed it uh, at a six month pace and a 12 month pace. And, it oh, kind of, and again, it kind of brings back to the whole point where you're betting on yourself. Um, so it's kind of one of those things, you know, I'll throw a number out there. If I spent 350,000 on marketing last year, can I bet on myself to at least double that? I, I think I could, me being me, I think I'll bet that any day of the week. Um, so that's kind of how I go with it. But if I break that down in a monthly standpoint, then you'd kind of drown yourself and be like, oh my God, I can't do that. And that's way too much. Man, and I did that first couple of years and I kind of drowned myself in almost like anxiety because I'm like, I can't spend five grand a month. Like I can't. <laughs> Until you do. <laughs> Until you like you. And then it, it, at that point, it kind of just goes on the back burner. It's like, okay, I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll make it up. Uh, I like that, man. All right. Question about who's getting these calls. Is it you or, or where are the calls going to? Yeah. So it's kind of funny you guys asked that. Um, I, I think the number one rule that I've realized in real estate is if you pick up your phone, you can make an extra like 200 grand very easily. Um, yeah, I pick up everything. Literally every call, I think I pick up on the first two rings and some clients ask me if I ever sleep or am I ever away from my phone? It's kind of unhealthy because my, my time hour on the phone is kind of scary. Um, but that's kind of the nature of the business right now. Um, but I do have an ISA team as well. So they, they go through my entire follow-up boss. So I kind of have like a three or four point touch system. I obviously use Y Lopo to go through, uh, the follow-up boss system. Um, and then I use, uh, two ISA companies and they go through the entire thing as well. So they'll call once or twice a day for five days a week. And if there's something cold or hot, they'll let me know if it's cold, they'll kind of text me and be like, Hey, this buyer isn't interested anymore. 
If it's hot, they'll send me a text message and email and say, hey, hop on them right now. They're hot. They want to buy. Um, but any yeah. brand new comes in, I answer. If you're not able to pick up, what's the protocol? I've never ran into that issue. <laughs> okay, so hold on. If somebody <laughs> calls you right now and you can't pick up unless you pick it up, right? But yeah. if you can't. <laughs> So they're looking out. Let's say a realtor doc. I mean, there, there's ways around it. So hopefully they don't come see this uh, this video. So let's they say won't. like we'll just skip this part. So let's say a realtor dot com or Zillow calls me right now, and it's like press one if you want to connect with this client. So if one, someone called me right now, I'd see it on my phone. I'd answer, but I put it on mute so they can't hear me. And I already know what the automated system's going to say. It's going to say press one if you want to connect with this client. So I'll, I'll press one with it right away, and then I'll wait about yeah. ten seconds and hang up. And then I have an automatic text message that goes out and it's like, hey, this is Adnan. Sorry, I didn't take your call. I saw you fire about this property. So it's like, I'm always picking up and I'm not. All right, you're good, dude. I, I actually have the same pack. That's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, like I can't remember how many times, like if I'm at like an event or on a fishing trip, I get these calls. I'm like, I can't lose this lead. I got to pick up. I'll pick it up, hit one and be like, okay, let's see what they want. And then if I can't get to it right away, I'll send it out to one of my showing agents and they'll go take care of it. You got it. What ISA companies are you using right now? You said uh, I'm using two. Yeah, I use uh, Lead Whisperers. Um, and then my lender actually, he built a ISA company around me that they pretty much answer all my calls and do all that. What's, his, what's your lender's name? Uh, so his name's Chris Keelan. He's from Family First Funding. Oh. I don't know him. I thought I thought I because I had another lender who was like, "Hey, I built this whole thing around agents." I'm like, "Okay, cool, nice man." Yeah, I think, like, uh, yeah, I think he did like seven or eight hundred million last year in uh, volume. So he, he's a he's a big contender for sure. Do you partner with the lender for your, your uh, mailers that you're sending out? Uh, some of them, yeah. If I do like the more expensive ones, where they're kind of like nice booklets and they're about you know six to eight pages, where it has my information and his information on there then things like that we do. Um, if it's just solely like the pendings and solds, I, I pay for all that. Nice. And what are you thinking really of the, are you doing the texting? Like with the, with the leads that you're getting? Or is that right. just your ISA companies are following up with that? Like, so you're doing the phone call, but yeah. are you involved in the texting portion of that? Uh, yeah. So I text them. I do all that stuff. The only time, the only time I don't follow up with them is obviously if they kind of fall through the cracks and they're not a hot lead in that second or that instance. And they're kind of like, hey, we're six months out or eight months out. And then the ISA is kind of take care of that. Yes. What are you, what are you doing for your clients that become past clients? Anything special that kind of keeps them in the loop in your world? Yeah. So this year I'm going to incorporate like a client appreciation party. Um, I'll do probably two different ones because I'm in two different markets, Sarasota and Naples. Um, so I'll do one in Naples and one in Sarasota. Um, other than that, usually for like the big holidays, like uh, Christmas, New Year's, things like that, I'll send out some gifts uh, through one of the platforms that Compass has. But Dude, um, so we're, we're in similar markets price point wise. And yeah. one of the things we're doing we haven't done it yet, but we're setting it up for May is we're going to have a pickleball, uh, event. Oh, I think that'll be fun. And, uh, as we know, a lot of the people that are into pickleball in our area specifically belong to the country clubs and they're jumping in and playing there. And it's like, oh, interesting. So we threw out a survey to our past clients and they're like, hell yeah, we'd be in. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Oh, so we're going to test that out. Uh, if you want to take that on and, and see if it works for you guys, but yeah, it's funny, it's funny, funny you mentioned that pickleball has grown so big. And outside of real estate, I do like tech stuff, right? Um, so I developed an app that I just sold out of it uh, two months ago. It's real estate related. So I'm trying to figure out something to do with pickleball because there's so much money into it. So I was like, there has to be something I could develop or create where you kind of grab. I think there's like I don't know two to five million active pickleball players, and it's only growing. And all these celebrities and big investors are buying their own teams and things like that. So it makes sense. It's kind of like the new golf. It is, man. I mean, golf's kind of boring to you. The pickleball's. Yeah, but a lot boring. of money's made on the golf course. But now it's like a lot of money's made on the pickleball court. No, that's true. That's just how it is. Anyway, we're having um, we're having a local pickleball paddle company sponsor it because they want to sell their paddles. Okay. And 
and the power company is owned by Jamie Fox. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to have that happen here. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, awesome. A question, a question as far as what you're excited about for this year that you want to implement besides the two events for your past clients, what are you excited about? Um, I think it's more so, so I'm always a guy that likes to be challenged. So obviously the last two, three years, real estate's kind of been easy. You know, you, you can sit on your couch and make $50,000 because the client's just like, hey, I want to put an offer site on scene on the property. So you really don't have to work at that point. I think this year the challenge is going to be we're back to the normal market. So it's going to be kind of a, even a more dog eat dog world and who becomes the best salesman and who can get the best products. Um, because everything is going to be go, going back to normal. You know, people aren't jumping at houses left and right and offering crazy amounts of money over a list price. Um, so I think that's going to be the most exciting part about it. Well, I like that, man. Anything you want to implement into your business that you're um, going to tech? Nothing really to change or to add, to be honest with you. I mean, I always kind of look for new things to add or implement. I just haven't found anything else that could, I guess, elevate it to a different level. Um, every time I try to figure something out or find something that could add it, add to it, I ended up just going back to my old ways because those are the ways that have always worked since day one. Nice, man. So it's like, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I like that. All right. Any, any plans to add more mailers to your whole structure? Yeah. You're happy nope. where that's at. Nope. The moment I close and you know, another home in a different uh, neighborhood, I'm sending out more mailers. So it, it's kind of gonna be a nonstop thing where I mean I, you know, I'll, I'll spend if I can spend five million dollars a year and make ten million dollars a year, I'll halfway do that. It, to me it doesn't <laughs> help. <laughs> All right. Dude, I love that. What what's on your mailers typically? Is it when uh, you're pending, when you have sold and when you have uh So I think there is a lot to so obviously a lot of Asians just send out like the photos of the houses, right? But I think there is a huge component to real estate of a personal connection. So I think making, what I do is I do half the mailer of a house and I do half the mailer of being a photo myself. And I think if they can put a name to a face, it's more personable versus like, oh, here's a random agent named Adnan who I have no idea what he looks like. But I'm not. I'm not going to call him if I have no idea what he looks like, and I can't present myself with a name and a face. Like, why would I call him? So I think it becomes more personal when you can actually connect with that person on, on a certain type of basis. Like, I had one. I had actually a couple people where they're like, "Oh my God, you remind me of like my grandson," and they'd never spoke to me, but supposedly I look like their grandson because I'm blonde hair and blue eyes. So, yeah, and random stuff like that sometimes works. I think that's a smart idea because that's what's going to get people to remember you too. It's like if yeah. you have a small little photo on the front or even on the back, I mean, what are the odds that someone doesn't even flip it over to see you? They just see, oh, just yeah. another home sold. But then it's like, oh, that he, didn't get, he keeps like popping up. You know, I keep seeing him here every month or every two months and it's like they can resonate. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I do. Obviously with the mailers, I bought a billboard on one of our bit and busiest roads. So I have a huge billboard um, and the billboard reads, have we met yet? dot 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 so and people i've literally had people texting like we've never met but what do you mean why would we meet so then then they kind of think oh he's a rose <laughs> <laughs> um so things like that i'm always trying to be in front of people nonstop. and again you're the brand your company's not the brand you're the brand so make it that's up. what trenton just texted me he says he's gonna get a billboard says have you played pickleball with me yet oh that's on it <laughs> I'm uh, just joking. He didn't text me. <laughs> but and a uh, question for Maxwell: Do you send mailers for every transaction or only certain ones? Uh, every transaction. Doesn't matter where. Nope. I love that, dude. You know, I'll, I'll give an example to this. We had a a lease listing a hundred thousand a month. Mm. It was the lease. Uh, ocean views, not even on the beach. Yeah. Uh, and we we decided to. We're like, you know what? This is a few years back. We decided to send out postcards all throughout. And then we got two callbacks, both for listings, 12 million plus. Oh, yeah. Wasn't even it wasn't even for lease. I'm like, man, I'm never gonna stop doing that. So, yeah. It's great. It makes a lot of sense. I mean it's one of the oldest tricks in the books, but it works. I used to think I remember when I first started, I was like, mailers don't work because I'd send one out and then expect like 10 call phone calls after. And I'm like, oh, this crap sucks. Like, I'm never going to do this. But then I realized you really just have to farm it and hit it hard and just keep going and keep going. And then 
there's gonna be a breaking point where you're gonna start getting like five calls a month and just be like, okay, now nah, I've hit that point. Yep, agreed. All right, Sean Williams says, what's the auto texture that you mentioned? Well, uh, through follow, that- follow up boss. Perfect. Jorge Perez says, does do you mail the surrounding areas near the listing? If so, how many approximately? It, um, we have a thing here called um, EDDM. Um, I don't know if you guys have that in your places, but um, that's what I use. And it just depends on the community. So if I if it's a certain community and it's gated, I only mail into that neighborhood unless it has like a competing community. If it's not gated, then I'll usually just do it by um, like an area radius, area radius, which I usually do like half a mile. So it just depends. And then I pick, I'll send out 2,000 cards, 5,000 cards. It all varies. Perfect. And Jorge starts smaller. EDDM sometimes is, is in blocks. So you yeah, really yeah. can't determine how many it's going to be. Yeah. So you'll be like around 500 and they'll be like, hey, there's only 425 here. Um, and that's it. Exactly. Well, so, um, great point, man. All right. Adin, thank you so much, man. What two areas do you cover and how do we follow you? Uh, so I cover Fort Myers, Naples, and Sarasota areas, and then my Instagram, Adnan Dedic. Hold on. Let me put that, and I'm going to follow you. Adnan, Dedic. then D-E-D, hold on, Adnan, D-E-D-I-C, right? Yep. Got it. All right. Let me grab that on Instagram and then dump it on here. Just in case anybody has any questions, you can follow him on Instagram and send him referrals. Dude, I... I still have to get together with you because I know people want to, there he is, follow you, I'll follow you. Perfect. Just and on. I'm going to connect you to part of my team because I know we often send referrals that way because we're in Malibu, Beverly Hills area, Calabasas, Westlake. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of funny. I started getting a lot of uh, people from that area as well, kind of migrating this way. A lot of uh, techies, CFOs, CEOs, um, CTOs, because I think it's right now, so... I'm going to connect you to Jacob um, Stiegel right now through uh, Messenger on Instagram. He's the guy that handles a lot of our perfect uh, luxury prices. So yeah. you guys can connect. All right, man. Thanks for jumping on. Trenton, thanks for doing this, man. We appreciate both of you. Yeah. And if you guys want to do this again, let me know. I'd be happy to. Dude, well, thanks for all the secrets, bro. Now we got them all out. There's more to them. I'm going to give it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. I love it. Thanks, so, man. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it.